mostly single target ability assassin that functions well with CDR, lots of power, and penetration. She's unique in that blink isn't necessary on her because her jump allows her to initiate and jump back if needed. Her best combo is to simply jump in, dump your 3 and 2 on someone, and jump back to safety. With the addition of her new kit, Basset actually has a lot of threatening CC, as most enemies will have to use beads on her ultimate. Even though it is good CC, it's also very good damage, so don't be afraid to barrel stuff your ultimate with your whole kit to simply just kill them. You can use your 3's root to set up your ults easier, but the timing isn't always perfect. Your cat on your 3 can block abilities and absorb autos for you, so use it early in a 1v1 to help you out. Keep in mind that your ult does go through walls, so it can really catch people off guard. Watch out for Wilkes players as she hard counters your jump, and be careful with jumping back if there are enemies camping your return spot. Max your 2, then your 1, then your 3, and put points in your ult whenever possible. Bologna is an auto attack focused warrior who also heavily counters other auto attackers. She functions best with tank and auto attack items like Berserkers, Shoguns, Nibian, etc. She can also be built damage in the jungle with attack speed items and power. Bologna's biggest strength is her pressure and her 1v1 potential. The current weapon in your hand depends on what ability you most recently used, and each weapon has a different benefit. Her 2 is a very strong early game ability that gives you AoE autos that basically make you outclear everyone in the game. Try to hit the enemy gob with a startup of the two to group up with the wave, then simply auto it down a few times to outclear. Your 1 gives you block stacks that absorb enemy auto attacks. Your 3 disarms enemies from autoing briefly, but also gives you a scourge which heals you for every third successful auto attack. The point is, Bologna's passive 1 and 3 are all very good 1v1 trump cards, so don't be afraid to trade with any other character in the game when these abilities are up. Her ultimate is a very strong initiation to use to start fights on the enemy backline, but don't be afraid to use it around objectives since it gives your team power and protections as well. Come late game, Bludgeon falls off tremendously, so abandon the two altogether and simply 3 the enemy ADC or mage that you are diving, then dash on them with the 1 and fight them in the block stance the whole time. Watch out for auto attack counters like Jingten and Witchblade, and characters that can interrupt your 2 in the laning phase, like Sobek. Max the 2, then the 3, then the 1, and put points in your ult whenever you can. Kabrakan is a unique guardian in that he has lots of CC, but is usually best played as an assassin type character. His nickname is Fat Loki because he's very single target focused and is quite good at quickly eliminating at least one person from the fight. He can be built in a variety of ways. A standard tank build with a void stone thrown in is quite nice, or you can go the full damage route with a polynomicon and flat pen items to decimate enemy backlines. Blink is a must buy on this character, and the usual initiation is to pop your 1 for slow immunity and movement speed, blink on an enemy squishy and hit them with the 1 to stun and burst them, then 2 them, ult them for lockdown and start slamming your tremors or your 3 just to make sure they're hating their life. Cab is very good at locking single targets down for long periods of time, especially characters without jumps, as Kabrakin's ultimate can completely block off paths. Use it to lock these characters in, or force the jumps of characters that have them so your team can clean them up. Keep in mind that your 2 only stuns when its passive is stacked up, so basically make sure you've taken some damage recently to ensure the CC. Kabrakin is a very in your face character, so don't be afraid to dive and initiate, especially if you've gone for a tanky or hybrid route with your build. Be careful with big CC ultimates like Ares, Daji, Bastet, etc. because Kabrakin has no CC immunity in his kit. Also watch out for block stacks that will block your 1's damage and stun from going off. Max your 2, then your 1, and then your 3, and put points into your ults whenever possible. Kamazots is an extremely high self-sustained slippery assassin who has 4 separate ways to heal himself in his kit. His builds are usually similar to most ability assassins in that you just buy CDR, power, and penetration, but it can also work really well with a bruiser build in the soul lane, consisting of a cad shield and other power slash prop items. His kit is pretty straightforward. All of your abilities do lots of damage, and if you hit them all on an enemy squishy, they will probably die. Blink is very cozy on him as it allows you to initiate without having to jump in, and it lets you barrel stuff your first two abilities which can be hard to hit from a distance. Make sure to catch your echo that comes out from hitting your one, as this will give you extra power and allow you to track the enemy for the next 15 seconds. Stack your passive up by hitting big jungle monsters with your 2, stacking up to 3 times giving you more lifesteal and healing. Your 3 is great for dodging abilities and jumping over walls, but it's also an amazing heal as it is uncapped, meaning you can go into the jungle between fights, jump on camps to heal you, and come right back, and you can even use it on up to 100 minions theoretically, and it would heal you for every single last minion you hit with it. Kamazots has a get out of jail free card with his ultimate, so only use it as the last ditch effort to get a kill in the team fight, or as a way to get out of the fight when things get sketchy. Watch out for anti-heal characters like Cerberus, Osiris, Bacchus, Sobek, and anti-heal items which heavily counter your kit. Max either your 1 or your 2 first, which is mostly preference, then your 3, and put points in your ult whenever you can. Cerberus is a high damage dealing guardian whose passive makes him a very strong healing counter. Cerberus purely played as a tank, going items like Thieves, Binding, Voidstone, Sov, etc., allowing him to be in the middle of a fight applying his anti-heal and setting up big blink initiations with his ultimate. 
similar to like an Ares. It's also recommended to throw an anti-heal item in there like Pestilence, Tainted, or maybe even a Divine for some damage, especially when going against healing comps, as Sir can be the one-stop shop for anti-heal on the entire team. Serb's one is a decently hard to hit ability, but if you auto attack an enemy four times or use your two or your ult prior, the ability will become a stun. You must hit all four heads in order to stun, and it can be tricky at times, but you'll start to get the hang of it once using it. Because your two stacks your one up, and also because it shreds protections from the enemy being hit and slows them, it's great to combo most fights with the two into the one, since the one will now hit harder because of the protection shred, and be more guaranteed off the back of the two slow. Surf 1 is also very good secure on jungle buffs early to mid game as it hits very hard. Surf can jump over walls and certain abilities with his 3, although it is slower than other jumps in the game so be careful with saving it till the last minute. It also gives you some sustain between fights or while farming. All you have to do is kill the little ghosts that spawn after jumping on enemies. Start most fights by blinking in and ulting to either force speeds or jumps, or throw them towards your team if the enemies have no response for you. Be careful of characters with knockup immunity however, as this completely counters Serb's ultimate CC. It still does the damage though. Max your 1, then your 2, then your 3, but only put extra points in your ultimate after your 1 and your 2 are maxed. Cernanos is an auto attack focused hunter whose kit flows extremely well and synergizes with itself. Cern is usually best built with a tank shredding build with items like Kins and Executioner, but he also functions well with crit and attack speed. Cern's 1 is one of the more unique abilities in the game as each season provides a different benefit to your auto attacks. To make it simple, use the Spring Stance or Green when you need to heal, the Winter Stance or Blue to chase down targets getting away, the Autumn Stance or Orange to start a fight to shred an objective or a tank's protections, and then Summer Stance for basically everything else like clearing camps or fighting. Cern's 2 is very good at wave clear and poke potential as it's very easy to hit the enemy gods in the wave with it at the same time but be careful of it being body blocked by minions or even gods. Stand to the side of the lane and throw it past the front of the wave for maximum efficiency. Cern can quickly combo somebody with his burst and auto cancels. Simply auto to someone to root and cripple, auto then dash through them and right click right after to cancel the dash, auto, ultimate, auto. And if they're still alive, then just leave the game. Cern is very good at standing his ground against tanks going on him because of his protection shred and autumn stance, plus his strong CC and his ultimate, which polymorphs or turns them into little goats, which is a CC that can't be DR'd or CCR'd. Be careful of cripples and big CC ultimates on this character. Beads are 100% necessary every game for him. As Cern has no CC immunity in his kit, and his dash can be easily interrupted if you aren't being careful and positioning well. Max your 2, then either your 3 or 1. I like the 3 for the burst and CD reduction, and then put extra points into your ult last. Chalk is a very simple warrior that can stalemate basically any 1v1 due to his high sustain and ranged poke. Chalk is a traditional ability based warrior so it's best to build him with some CDR, tankiness, and items to specifically counter the enemy team comp in each game. It's very easy to hit the whole way with your 1 from a distance as well as poking the enemy with it so try to do both at the same time. When fighting auto attack characters in lane, try to hit them with the 1 and then use the 3 to slow their movement speed and auto attack speed. It's okay to keep your distance on this character in the laning phase as well and use your range, but in team fights, it's best to blink initiate with your ultimate as this ability provides a strong knock up and silence while also giving you an absurd amount of damage mitigation. Time your ultimate off big damage abilities to basically immune them altogether, like Poseidon's Kraken or Agni's bombs, etc. However, pick your battles wisely as Chalk's escape isn't very fast and is very telegraphed since you must throw your 1 down somewhere and then click 2 to teleport to that spot. You can play mind games with the enemy by throwing the 1 down and running the exact opposite direction of the axe in order for them to have to make a decision, follow you or play the escape. Chalk's 1 into 2 combo does a lot of damage, especially in the laning phase, so don't be afraid to full clear waves with it. And keep in mind that your 2 gives you protections for each enemy hit, including minions, so 2 the whole wave then fighting in your rain is amazing for boxing potential. Watch out for anti-heal characters and items, and be careful late game diving without the help of your teammates, as Chalk's damage falls off when built tanky come late game. Max your 1, then your 2, or 3 if you're in a rough matchup, and then put points in your ult whenever possible. Chang'e is a very unique mage in that she can be built purely for damage or as more of a battle mage, a hybrid tanky yet powerful character. Chang'e's passive allows her to buy items from out on the battlefield, sending her rabbit back to base to pick it up and bring it back to her. You can go the typical power and pen option on her and hit really hard with your scaling, or you can build her tanky especially in the soul lane with CDR items and bruiser items like Lotus Crown and Void Stone. Chang'e is a very spammy character who wants to whittle down the enemies with her short cooldowns and bring her own teammates up with her AoE heal on her 3. Chang'e's 2 is an instant damage and CC immunity that can be timed to negate some of the biggest ultimates in the game like Ares ultimate, Kraken, Dodgy ultimate, you name it, Chang'e can immune it. Be careful however, as the ability doesn't last very long so practice timing it to immune what's necessary to immune. Chang'e also has no traditional escape, just movement speed from her passive and the aforementioned 2, so make sure you're positioning behind your frontline especially if you're building damage. Chang'e's ultimate gets stronger the more people you hit with it, 
So try to line up the enemies when tossing it out so that the enemies in the back get stunned for even longer. Chang'e's ultimate has the potential to stun someone for 5 seconds. Chang'e isn't great at diving backlines, nor is she amazing at dealing with tanks. She's best suited when she's grouped with her entire team and spamming her poke in her heals. So make sure to stay grouped with the squad, and don't forget that your 3 provides 50% anti-heal on the enemies. Combine that with a Divine Ruin, and they are practically not even healing. Watch out for anti-heal and characters that run you down and stay on top of you, like Osiris, Gilgamesh, and Odin. Max your 1, then your 3, and then your 2, and put points in your ult whenever possible.